hear me? You're gonna be sick like it was last night. That's good. You drink some, George. You drink some too. I ain't sure it's good water. It looks kind of scummy to me. Look at the wrinkles in the water, George. Look what I done. Tastes all right. Don't seem to be running much, though. Eleni, you ought to be drinking water when it ain't running. Uh, you'd drink water out of the gutter if you was thirsty. God damn it. We could just a well the road clear to the ranch. That bus driver didn't know what he was talking about. Just a little stretch down the highway, he says. Just a little stretch. A damn near four miles. I bet he didn't want to stop at the ranch gate. I bet he's too damn lazy to pull up. Wonder he didn't. Too lazy to stop at Soul of Dad at all. Just a little stretch down the road. George? Yeah, what do you want? Where are we going, George? See, you forgot that already, did you? So I gotta tell you again. Jeez, you're crazy. I forgot. I tried not to forget. Honest to God, I did. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you again. Well, I ain't got nothing to do. I uh, might just as well spend all my time telling you things. You forget them. I'll tell you again. I tried and I tried, but, but it didn't do no good. I remember about the rabbits, George. What the hell with the rabbits? You can't remember nothing but them rabbits. You remember sitting in that gutter on Howard Street and watching that blackboard? <laughs> oh, sure. I remember that. But what did we do then? I remember some girls come by, and they says, I had the, the, the help with what they said. You remember about us going in Marion Reddy's, and they give us work cards and bus tickets? George? Yeah. I ain't got mine. I must have lost it. You never had none. I got both of them. Here. <laughs> Think I'd let you carry your own work card? <laughs> I thought I'd put it in my side pocket. <laughs> What'd you take out of that pocket? Can't think of my pocket. Oh, I know there ain't. You got it in your hand now. What you got in your hand? I ain't got nothing, George, honest. Come on, give it here. It's only a mouse. Mouse? A live mouse? No, just a dead mouse. I didn't kill it, honest, I found it. I found it dead. Give it here. Oh, leave me have it, George. Give it here.
We're going to sleep here tonight because uh, because I want to. I want to sleep out. Well, why ain't we going to the ranch to get some supper? We got supper at the ranch. Uh, no reason, no reason. I just like it here. Tomorrow, we'll be going to work. I seen thrashing machines on the way down. That means we'll be bucking grain bags, busting a gut, lifting up them bags. Tonight, I'm going to stay right here and look up. Tonight, well, there ain't a grain bag or a boss in the world. Tonight, the drinks is on the, the house. What do you think of our house, Lenny? Nice house. Hey, we're going to have some supper? Well, sure we are. You, you gather up some dead willow sticks. I got three cans of beans in my bindle. I'll open them up while you get a fire ready. We'll eat them cold. I like beans with ketchup. Well, we ain't got no ketchup. You go get wood. Don't you fool around, none. It'll be dark before long. George, George, what do you want? Oh, 
was only fooling, George. I don't want no ketchup. I wouldn't need no ketchup if it was right here beside me. If there was some here, you could have it. And if I had a thousand bucks, I'd buy you a bunch of flowers. I wouldn't need no ketchup, George. I'd leave it all for you. You could cover your beans so deep with it, I wouldn't touch none of it. When I think of the swell time I could have without you, I go nuts. I never get no peace. You want I should go away and leave you alone? Where the hell would you go? Well, I could go off in the hills there, find a place. I could, I could live in a cave. Yeah. How'd you eat? You ain't got sense enough to find out what to eat. I'd find things. I don't need no nice food with ketchup. I'd lay out in the sun and nobody would hurt me. And if I found a mouse, why, I could keep it. Wouldn't nobody take it away from me. I've been mean, ain't I? If you don't want me, I can go right up in the hills and find a cave. I can go away any time. No, look. I was just fooling you. Of course I want you to stay with me. Trouble with mice is you always kill them. Tell you what I'll do, lady. First chance I get, I'll find you a pup. Maybe you wouldn't kill it. That would be better than mice. You could pet it harder. Of course, if you don't want me, you only gotta say so. I'll go right up in them hills and by myself. I won't get no mice stole from me. I want you to stay with me. Jesus Christ, somebody would shoot you for a coyote if you was by yourself. <laughs> stay with me. Oh, your Aunt Clara wouldn't like you running off by yourself, well, even if she is dead. George, huh? tell me like you've done before. Tell you what? About the rabbits. You ain't gonna put nothing over. Come on, George, please. Tell me like you've done before. You get a kick out of that, don't you? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. Then we'll lay out our beds and eat our dinner. Go on, George. Guys like us that work on ranches is the loneliest guys in the world. They ain't got no family. They don't belong no place. They come to a ranch, work up a stake, and then they go into town and blow their stake. And then the first thing you know, they're pounding their tails on some other ranch. They ain't got nothing to look ahead to. That's it. That's it. You know how it is with us. Well, with us it ain't like that. We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room blowing in our jack just because we got no place else to go. If them other guys gets in jail, well, they can rock for all anybody gives a damn. But not us. And why? Because because I got you to look after me, and you got me to look after you, and that's why. Go on, George. You got it by heart. You can do it yourself. No, no. I forget some of the stuff. <laughs> tell how it's going to be. Yeah, some other time. No, tell how it's going to be. Okay. Someday, we're going to get the jack together, and we're going to have a little house. And a couple of acres, and a cow, and some pigs. And live off the fat of land, and have rabbits. Go on, George. Tell how we're going to have the garden, and about the rabbits in the cages. Tell about the rain in the winter, and about the stove, and about how thick the cream is in the milk, you can hardly cut it. Tell about that, George. Well, why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. Oh, it ain't the same if I tell it. Go on, though. How do I, how do I get to tell the rabbits? Well, we'll have a big vegetable patch, and a rabbit hutch, and chickens. <coughs> and when it rains in the winter, we'll just say, to hell we're going to work. We'll build up a fire and stove, and sit around it and listen to the rain, What are you going to say tomorrow when the boss asks you questions? <coughs> I, I ain't going to say a word. <laughs> Good boy. That's fine. Say, maybe you're getting better. I bet I can let you tend the rabbits. Especially if you remember as good as that. I can remember, my God. Lenny, I want you to look around here. Think you can remember this place? The ranch is about a quarter mile up that way. Follow the river and you can get here. Sure, I can remember here. I 
didn't remember about not going to say a word. Yeah, you remember that. Well, look, Lenny, if you just happen to get in trouble, I want you to come right here and hide in the brush. Hide in the brush? Hide in the brush until I come for you. Think you can remember that? Sure I can, George. Hide in the brush till you come for me. But you ain't going to get in no trouble. Because if you do, I won't let you tend the rabbits. I won't get in no trouble. I ain't going to say a word. You've got it. Anyways, I hope so. It's going to be nice sleeping here. Look it up. The leaves. And don't you build up one more fire. We'll let her die. Jesus, you feel free when you ain't got a job. Oh, he ain't hungry. George? Mm, what do you want? Let's have different colored rabbits, George. Sure. Red rabbits. Blue rabbits. Green rabbits. Billions of them. Furry ones, George? Like I seen in the fair in Sacramento? Sure, furry ones. Because, <laughs> of course, I can just as well go away, George, and live in a cave. George? What is it? I'm shutting up, George. Party boys! 
Yeah, he come right in here with a whole gallon. He sat right over there and he says, drink hearty, boys. Oh, 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 oh. This, this guy just come. I wrote Murray and Reddy I wanted two men this morning. You got your work slip? Here they are. I see it wasn't Murray and Reddy's fault. It says right here on the slip you used to be here for work this morning. Well, bus driver gave us a long stare. We had to walk for 10 miles. Bus driver says we was here. We wasn't. Couldn't find no rides. Well, I had to send out the green team short two buckets. It won't do any good now to go up until after dinner. You get lost. What's your name? George Milton. George Milton. What's yours? His name's Lenny Small. Lenny Small. Let's see, this is the 20th, or noon the 20th. Where you boys been working? Up around, we... You too? Yeah, you too. Say, you're kind of big fella, aren't you? Yeah, he can work with hell, too. He ain't much of a talker, though, nah, is he? Nah, he ain't. Nah. But he's a hell of a good worker. Strong as a bull. Strong as a bull. You are, huh? What can you do? He can do anything. What can you do? Anything you tell him. He's a good skinner. He can wrestle brain bags, drive a cultivator. He can do anything, just give him a try. Then why don't you let him answer? What's he laughing about? He laughs when he gets excited. Yeah? Uh, but he's a goddamn good worker. I ain't saying he's right. Because he ain't. Uh, but he can put up 400 pounds daily. Say, what you selling? Huh? I said, what stake you got in this guy? You taking his pay away from him? No, of course I ain't. Never seen one guy take so much trouble for another guy. I just like to know what your percentage is. He's, he's my, my cousin. I told this old lady I'd take care of him. He got kicked in the head by a horse when he was a kid. He's all right. He just ain't bright. But he can do anything you tell him. Well, God knows he don't need no brains to buck barley bags. But don't you try to put nothing over, Milton. I got my eye on you. Why'd you quit and we? Job was done. What kind of job? Well, we was digging a cesspool. All right. But don't try to put nothing over, because you can't get away with nothing. I've seen wise guys before. Go out with the grain teams after dinner. They're out picking up barley with the thrashing machines. Go out with Slim's team. Slim? Yeah, big, tall skinner. You'll see him at dinner. Been on the road long? Been with us three days in Frisco looking at the boards. You didn't go to no nightclubs, I suppose. We was looking for a job. That's a great town. You got a little jack, Frisco. We didn't have no jack or nothing like that. Go out to the green teams after dinner. My hands work hard, they get pie. When they loaf, they bounce down the road on their can. You ask anybody about me. So you wasn't going to say a word. You was going to leave your big flapper shut. I was going to do the talking. You goddamn near lost us a job. I forgot. You forgot. You always forget. Now he's got his eye on us. Now we gotta be careful, not make no slips. You keep your big flapper shut after this. You talk like kind of a nice guy towards the last. He's the boss, ain't he? Well, he's the boss first and a nice guy afterwards. Don't you have nothing to do with no boss except to do your work and draw your pay. You can't never tell whether you're talking to a nice guy or the boss. <coughs> Just keep your goddamn mouth shut. Then you're all right. George? wasn't kicked in the head with no horse, was I, George? Damn good thing if you was. Save everybody a hell of a lot of trouble. <laughs> he says I was your cousin. Well, that was a goddamn lie. And I'm glad it was. Why, if I was a relative of yours, I'd... Wait. Say, what the hell are you doing? Oh, no, 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 you listening? No, no, nothing, nothing. I, I, I wasn't listening. I, I was just standing in the... Shame of it is scratching the dog. Now, I just finished one, but not the watch. You was poking your nose in our business. I don't like those guys. I just came in here. I didn't hear nothing you guys were saying. I ain't interested in nothing you guys were saying. Guy in a ranch don't never listen, nor you don't ask questions. Damn right you don't. Well, the guy wants to stay working long. Well, that's a hell of a old dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I had a You gotta take him right, of course. He's running this ranch. He don't take no nonsense. So what time do we eat? 
drawing cards this hand? I might. So you get a chance to eat the game. Say, what the hell's he got on his shoulder? When he didn't say nothing to him? Oh, that's the boss's son. Currently, he's pretty handy. He's done quite a bit in the ring. The guy says he's pretty handy. Well, let him be handy. You don't have to take it after Lenny. Lenny, Lenny didn't do nothing to him. Well, I'll tell you what. Curly's like a lot, like a lot of little guys. He hates big guns. He's all the time picking scraps with big guns. Kind of like he's mad at him because he ain't a big guy. You've seen little guys like that, ain't you? Always oh, scrappy. Sure. I've seen plenty of tough little guys, but this here Curly better make no mistakes about Lenny. Lenny ain't handy, see, but this Curly pump's gonna get hurt if he messes around with Lenny. Yeah, Curly's pretty handy. You know, it never did seem right to me. Now, suppose Curly jumps the big guy and licks him. Everybody says, well, game guy Curly is. Well, Suppose he jumps him and, and gets licked. And everybody says the big guy ought to pick somebody his own size. Seems like Curly ain't giving nobody a chance. Well, he better watch out for Lenny. Lenny ain't no fighter. But Lenny's strong and quick. And Lenny don't know no rules. Uh, don't, don't, tell, uh, don't tell Curly I said none of this. Uh, he slaps me. You know, he, he just don't give a damn. He won't ever get tanned because his old man's the boss. Guy Curly sounds like a son of a bitch to me. I don't like mean little guys. Uh, uh, it seems to me like he's worse lately. Got married a couple weeks ago. Wife lives over to the boss's house. Seems like Curly's worse than ever since he got married. <laughs> like he's sitting on an ant hill and the big red ant come up and nipped him on the turnip. <laughs> Just feel so goddamn miserable he'll strike at anything that moves. No, I, I, I I kind of feel sorry for him. Maybe he's showing off for his wife. You, uh, seen that glove on his hand? Sure, I see it. <laughs> well, that glove's full of Vaseline. <laughs> Vaseline? What for? <laughs> well, Curly says he's keeping that hand soft for his wife. <laughs> That's a dirty kind of thing to tell around. Well, I ain't quite so sure. <laughs> I've seen such funny things a guy will do to try to be nice. I ain't so sure. But you just wait till you see Curly's wife. Yeah, is she pretty? Oh, yeah. Pretty, but, uh... But what? Well, she got the eye. Yeah, married two weeks. Got the eye. Maybe that's why Curly's pants is full of ants. Oh, yeah, sir. I've seen her give Slim the eye. Slim's a jerk line skinner. Oh, hell of a nice fella. Well, I've seen her give Slim the eye. Curly never seen it. And I've seen her give a skinner named Carlson the eye, too. Looks like we're gonna have fun. You know what I think? I think Curly's married himself a tart. He ain't the first. Yes, sir, there's plenty of that. Well, I gotta be setting out the wash basins for the guys. The team will be in before long, you know. You guys go to Buck Farm, do you? Mm, yeah. Do you, uh, you won't tell Curly nothing I said. No, no. Well, you look her over, mister. You see if she ain't a tight. Look, Lenny, this here ain't no setup. You're gonna have trouble with that curly guy. I've seen that kind before. You know what he's doing? He's kind of feeling you up. He figures he's got you scared and he's gonna take a sock at you. First chance he gets. I don't want no trouble. Don't let him sock you, George. I hate them kind of bastards. I've seen plenty of them. Like the old guy says, curly don't take no chances. He always figures to win. If he tangles with you, Lenny, we're gonna get the can. Don't make no mistake about that, he's the boss's kid. Look, you try to keep away from him, will you? Don't never speak to him. If he comes in here, you move clear to the other side of the room. Will you remember that, Lenny? I don't want no trouble. Never done nothing to him. Well, that ain't gonna do you no good. If Curly wants to set himself up for a fighter. Just don't have nothing to do with him. Will you remember? Sure, George. I ain't gonna say a word. Never mind. Hey, Here come the guys. Just don't say nothing. <coughs> you ain't mad, George. I ain't mad at you. I'm mad at this here curly bastard. I wanted we should get a little steak together, maybe a hundred dollars.
say a word. Don't let him pull you in. But the son of a bitch socks you. Let him have it. Let him have what, George? <laughs> oh, never mind. Look, if you get in any kind of trouble, remember what I told you to do? If I get in any kind of trouble, you can let me tell the rabbits? Hmm, yeah, but that's not what I mean. Do you remember where we slept last night? Down by the river. Oh, oh sure I remember. I go there and hide in the brush till you come for me. That's it. Hide till I come for you. Don't let nobody see you. Hide in the brush by the river. Now say that over. Hide in the brush by the river. Yeah, hide in the brush by the river till you come for me. If you get in trouble. If I get in trouble. Looking for Curly. He was in here a minute ago, but he went along. Did the new fellas you just come in here? Yeah. Well, sometimes Curly's out here. Well, he ain't here now. Well, if he ain't, I guess better look someplace else. <laughs> if I see Curly, I'll pass the word he was looking for him. Can't be blame a person for looking. That depends on what she's looking for. Looking for somebody to talk to, don't you just never want somebody to talk to? Okay, put that lead pair in the North Star. Hi, Slim. Hello. I, I'm trying to find Curly. You ain't trying very hard. I just seen him go in your house. I gotta keep going. Jesus, what a tramp. So that's what Curly picks for a wife. God Almighty, did you smell that stink she got on? Still smell her. Don't even have to see her to know she's around. <laughs> she's pretty. Yeah, and she's sure hiding it. Curly got his work ahead of him. Gosh, she's pretty. Listen to me, you crazy bastard. Don't you even look at that bitch. I don't care what she says or what she does. I've seen him poisoned before, but I ain't never seen no piece of jailbait worse than her. Don't you even smell near her. I never smelled, George. Ah, oh, you never. But when she was standing there, showing you her legs, she wasn't looking the other way either. Never been no bad things, George. Honestly, I never. Well, you keep away from her. You let Curly take the rap, you let himself in for it. A lot full of Vaseline. I bet he's eating raw eggs. <laughs> and, and writing to patent medicine houses. <laughs> I don't like this place. This ain't no good place. I don't like this place. I don't like it either, no better than you do. We gotta keep it till we get a steak. But well, we're flat. We gotta get a steak. We can get just a few dollars in the poke. We can go up the shove off, go up American River and pan gold. I can make a couple of dollars a day there. Let's go, George. Let's get out of here. It's mean here. I tell you, we gotta stay a little while. We gotta get a steak. Shut up now. The guys will be coming in. Maybe we gotta wash up. Now we ain't got nothing to get dirty. Damn bitch out there, I can't see a thing. Oh, well, you the new guys. Just come. You want Buck Barley? That's what the boss says. Well, I hope you get it on my team. The boss said we can go with jerk line skinner named Slim. But that's me! Are you a jerk line skinner? I can snap him around a little. I kind of amaze you. Jesus Christ, oh. on this ranch, don't it? Like the man says, the boss tells you what to do, but if you want to know how to do it, you got to ask the mule skinner. <laughs> the man says that any guy that can drive 12 Arizona jackrabbits with a jerk line can fall on the toilet, come up with mince pie and a recharge. Well, I hope you get on my team. You guys travel around again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's bucked a lot of barley to me. I ain't nothing to scream about, but that big guy there put up more grain alone than most pairs can. We look after each other. He ain't bright. Hell of a good worker, though. Hell of a nice fella, too. I've known him for a long time. There ain't many guys travel around together. I don't know why. Maybe everybody in the whole damn world is afraid of each other. Yeah, it's a lot nicer to go around with a guy you know. You get used to it. It ain't no fun alone anymore. Hello, Slim. Hey. These are the new guys. They just cut. Name's Carlson. How are you? Nice to meet you. George Milton was here, Lenny Small. Nice to meet you. He ain't very small, is he? <laughs> uh, Slim, I've been meaning to ask you, how's your business?
bitch. I seen she wasn't under your wagon this morning. And she slammed her pups last night at nine of them. I drowned four of them right off. She couldn't feed them. Well, you got five left, huh? Yeah, I kept the biggest. And which, what kind of dogs do you think they're going to be? I don't know. Some kind of shepherd, I imagine. That's the most kind I've seen around her when she was in heat, anyhow. Yeah. I had Nairsdale once, and the guy down the road had one of those little white floozy dogs, you know? Now, she was in heat, the guy locks her up. Well, my ass there, her name Tommy was, he had a woodshed clear down to the roots to get at her. <laughs> guy come over one day, and he's sore as hell, and he says, uh, I wouldn't mind if my bitch had some clubs, but Christ Almighty, this morning she slammed a whole living of Shetland ponies! <laughs> You got five left, huh? Yeah, I got five. Well, look here, son. You know, I've been thinking that dog at Candy's is so goddamn old that he can't hardly walk. And, uh, he stinks like hell. Every time Candy brings him to the bunkhouse, I can smell him for two or three days. And why don't you get Candy to shoot his old dogs, give him one of your pups to raise up? You uh, can smell the dog a mile off. He ain't got enough teeth, you know. Candy feeds him milk because he can't chew nothing else. I'm leading him around on the string so he don't bump into things. There she goes. Yeah, you better come along. Won't bring nothing like for another minute. George, huh? Yeah, I heard him, Lenny. <laughs> I'll ask him. A brown and white one? Yeah, come on. Let's get dinner. I don't know whether he's got a brown and white one. You ask right away, George. So it won't kill no more. Sure. Come on now. Let's go. You see a girl around here? About a half hour ago, maybe. Well, what the hell was she doing? She said she was looking for you. Which way did she go? I don't know. I didn't watch her go. You know, Lenny, I'm scared I'm gonna tangle that bastard myself. I hate his guts. Hey, Jesus Christ, come on. There won't be a damn thing left to eat. I turned 
Lenny and I says, jump in. What happened? He jumped. Couldn't swim a stroke. He damn near drowned. And he was so nice to me for pulling him out. <laughs> Clean for God, I told him to jump in. Yeah, well, I ain't done nothing like that. Not no more. Makes me kind of sick just telling about it. He's a nice fella. I don't need no sense to be a nice fella. Seems like to be sometimes it's just the other way around. Take a real smart guy. He ain't ever hardly a nice fella. I ain't got no people. I see guys go around on the ranch alone. Well, that ain't no good. They don't have no fun. After a while, they get mean. Yeah, I seen them get mean. I see them so they don't want to talk to nobody. Some ways they got to. Take a bunch of guys all living in one room, and by God, they got to mind their own business. That's the only private thing a guy's got is where he's coming from and where he's been. Those Lenny's a goddamn nuisance most of the time. Yeah, but you get used to going around with a guy. You can't get rid of him. I mean, you get you get used to him, and you, you can't get rid of being used to him. Well, I, I'm sure tripping at the mouth. I ain't told nobody all this before. You want to get rid of him? Well, he gets in trouble all the time because he's so goddamn dumb. Like what happened to Weed. You wouldn't tell nobody, would you? Well, what'd you do in Weed? You wouldn't tell. No, of course you wouldn't. What'd he do? Well, he's seen this girl in a red dress. Dumb bastard like he is, he, he wants to touch anything he likes. Just wants the feel of it. So he reaches out to feel this red dress. Girl lets out a squawk, and then they got, that gets Lenny all mixed up and holds on because that's the only thing he can think to do. And, you know, well, this girl, she squawks her head off. Well, I'm right close, I hear the yelling. So I comes running. By that time, Lenny's scared to death. You know, I, I had to sock him over the head with a fence picket to make him let go. What happens then? Uh, she runs in and tells a lot of them that she's been raped. Guys in weeds start out to lynch Lenny. Oh, there we sit in an irrigation ditch. Underwater, all the rest of the day. Got only our heads sticking up out of the water. <laughs> up out of the grass, it rolls up on the side of the ditch. At night, we run out of there. You didn't hurt the girl not, huh? Hell no, we just scared her. Funny guy. Funny? <laughs> By one time, you know what that big baby done? No, he was walking along the road. He sees a frog laying there, thinks it's alive, it's dead. Hey. Lenny, how do you like your pup? He's brown and white, just like a one. <laughs> Lenny. Hmm? What do you want, George? I told you you couldn't bring that pup in here. What pup, George? I ain't got no pup. <laughs> oh, give him to me, George. You get right up and take this pup to the nest. He's got to sleep with his mother. You want to kill him? Just born last night and you take him out of the nest. You take him back, or I'll tell Slim not to let you have him. Give him to me, George. I'll take him back. I don't mean nothing, George. Honestly, I didn't. I just wanted to pet him a little. All right. You get him back there quick, and don't you take him out no more. Jeez, it's just like a kid, isn't it? Yeah, sure, sure he's like a kid. There ain't no more harm in him than a kid either, except that he's so strong. I bet he won't come in here and sleep tonight. Well, he'll sleep right alongside that box in the barn. Well, yeah, let him. He ain't doing no harm out there. Well, Slim, little George, don't either of you play horseshoe? Oh, I don't like to play every night. Either of you guys got a slug of whiskey? Mm -hmm. I don't. I got an awful cut egg. I don't. I drink it myself if I had, and he ain't got no cut egg. You know, goddamn cabbage gave it to me. I know that it was going to even before I had it. Christ, how that nigger can pinch shoes. He's plenty good. Damn right he is. Yeah, well, I don't ever give anybody else a chance to win. God almighty, that dog stinks. Get him out of here, can't he? I don't know nothing that stinks as bad as old dogs. You gotta get him out of here. I, I've been around with him so much, I never noticed how he stinks. Well, I can't stand him in here. That stink hangs around long after he's gone. I've got his teeth all stiff with rheumatism. He ain't no good to you. Why don't you shoot him? Well, hell, I had him so long. I had him since he was a pup. Herding sheep with him. You wouldn't think you to look at him now, but he was the best damn sheep dog I ever had. I know a guy in weed that uh, had an Airedale that could herd sheep. Learned it from the other dogs. But look at Katie, this old dog, he just suffers all the time. Was to take him out and shoot him, but uh, right back in the head. Well, they never know what hit him. I, I, I couldn't do that. I had him too long. 
matters, dog. What matters is the way he feels about it. Hell, I had a mutt once I wouldn't have traded for a field trial point. Well, Kenny, you can be a nice one, that's all. Keeping them alive. Look, if Slim's bitter. If Slim's bitch has got a litter right now, I bet you'd give one. So you wouldn't you, Slim? Yeah, you can have a pop if you want. Well, maybe it would hurt. I don't mind taking care of it. I'd be better off the dead. The way I shoot him, he wouldn't feel nothing. I'd put the gun right back in his head. Well, I'll let him alone, Carl. Well, hell, he wouldn't even quit him. Say, did you see this? Did you see this in this book here? See what? Right there. Read that. I don't want to read nothing. It'd be all over a minute, Candy. Come on. Did you see it, Slim? Go on, read it. What is it? Read it out loud. Dear Editor, I read your mag for six years and I think it is one of the best on the market. I like stories about by Peter Rand. I think he is a winged dainty. Give us more like the dark writer. I don't write many letters, just thought I would tell you I think your mag is the best dime's worth I ever spent. What do you want me to read that for? Well, go on, read, read the name at the bottom. Yours for success, William Tanner. What would you want me to read that for? Oh, come on, Candy, what do you say? You don't remember Bill Tanner? Worked here about three months ago. Little guy drove a, drove a color bear. Well, that's him. That's the guy! Oh, uh, look it, Kenny. If you want me to, I'll put the old devil out of his misery right now and get it over with. There ain't nothing left for him. He can't eat, he can't hardly see, he can't even walk. Tomorrow you can pick up one of Slim's pups. Sure, I got a lot of them. You ain't got no gun. <laughs> the hell I ain't, I got a Luger. It won't hurt him none at all. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, let's wait till tomorrow. Yeah, well, I don't see no reason for it. Let's just get it over with now. I, well, well, hell, we can't sleep with him stinking in here. You better let him go, Kenny. Um, uh, all right, okay. Come on, boy, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Cross? Yeah, take a show. Well, sure, I, I got you. Come on. One of my lead mules got a uh, bad hoof, got to get some tar on it. Anybody want to play a little Luger? Sure, I'll lay out some with you. Can you can have uh, any of them pups that you want. What the hell is taking him so long? Lay out some cards, will you? We ain't gonna play no euchre this way.
Lynchy or Lulu? I ain't seen that much of her. Well, you stick around and keep your eyes open. You'll see plenty of them. She's just working on everybody all the time. Seems like she's even working on the stable book. I don't know what the hell she wants. Been any trouble since she got here? No, there ain't been no trouble yet. She's only been here a couple of weeks. Curly's got yellow jackets in his drawers, but that's all so far. Every time the guys is around, she's, she shows up. She's looking for Curly. Seems like she can't keep away from the guys. And Curly's running around like a cat looking for a dirt road. But they ain't been no trouble. And the ranch with a bunch of guys on it ain't no place for a girl, especially like her. If she gives you any ideas, you ought to come into town with us tomorrow night. Why? What's going on? Just the usual thing. We go into old Susie's place. Hell of a nice place. Old Susie's laugh. Always cracking jokes. Like she says when we come up on the front porch last Saturday night, Susie opens the door and she yells over her shoulder, get your coats on girls, here comes the sheriff. She never talks dirty either. Got five girls there. What does it set you back? Two and a half. You can get a shot of whiskey for 15 cents. Susie got nice chairs to send him to. If a guy don't want to flop, why, he can just sit in them chairs and have a couple of three shots and just pass the time of day. Susie don't give a damn. She ain't rushing guys through and kicking them out if they don't want to flop. I might go in and look over the joint. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Her cracking jokes all the time. Like she says one time, she says, I knew people that if they got a rag rug on the floor and a QP doll lamp on the phonograph, they think they're running a parlor house. That's Gladys how she's talking about. And Susie says, I know what you boys want, she says. My girls is clean, she says. And there ain't no water in my whiskey. If any of you guys want to look at a QP doll lamp and take your chance of getting burned, why, you know where to go. She says there's guys around here walking bow-legged because they like to look at a QP doll lamp. Gladys wanted the other house, huh? Yeah. We don't never go to Gladys. She don't crack no jokes. But Susie's place is clean and she's got nice chairs. Guy can just sit in there like he lived there. She don't let no manila boobs in either. Yeah, I don't know. Me and Lenny's rolling up a steak. I might go in and set and have a shot. But I ain't going to put up no two and a half. Well, a guy got to have some fun sometimes. Didn't bring him back in, did you, Lenny? No, George, honest. I see. Say, how about this you could get? Uh, okay, I didn't think you wanted to play. You guys seen my wife? She ain't been here. Well, Slim, he went out in the barn. He was putting some tar on a split book. How long ago did he go? For five, ten minutes. <laughs> I guess maybe I'd like to see this. Curly must be spoiling her, he wouldn't have started with Slim. Curly's handy, goddamn handy, but he better not mess with Slim. Just better leave Slim alone. I think Slim's with his wife, don't he? Looks like it. I don't think Slim is, but I'd like to see the bus if it comes off. Come on, let's go. Uh, I don't want to get mixed up in nothing. Me and Lenny, uh, gotta make a stay. Well, I'll look over. I can see a good fight hell of a long time. <laughs> You see Slim out in the barn? Sure. He told me he better not to pet the pub no more. Like I said. Did you see that girl out there? You mean Curly's girl? Yeah, did she come in the barn? No. Anyway, 
gonna be till we get the place to live off the fat of the land. I don't know. We gotta get a big stake together. I know a little place we can get cheap, but they ain't gonna give it away. Tell about that place, George. I just told you last night. Go on, tell again. Well, it's ten acres. Got a little windmill, got a little shack on it, a chicken uh, run. Got a kitchen orchard. Cherries, apples, peaches, cots, nuts. Got a few berries. And there's a place for alfalfa and plenty of water. But there's a pig pen. And rabbits, George? I could easy build a few hutches. And you could feed alfalfa to them rabbits. <laughs> Damn right I could. Goddamn right I could. We could have a few, a few pigs. I'd go to the smokehouse. And when we kill a pig, we could smoke the hams. <clears throat> when the salmon run up the river, we can catch a hundred of them. <laughs> Every Sunday, we, we, we'd kill a chicken or a rabbit. Maybe we'll have a cow or a goat. And the cream is so goddamn thick, you can cut it up in a pan with a knife. We can live off the fat of the land. Yeah, all kinds of vegetables in the garden. And if we want a little whiskey, we can sell some eggs or something. And we wouldn't sleep in no bunkhouse. And we could can us in the middle of the job. Tell about the house, George. Sure. We'd have a little house. And a room to ourselves. And it ain't enough land, so we'd have to work too hard. Maybe you know, six, seven hours a day. <clears throat> we wouldn't have to buck no barley 11 hours a day. And, and when we put in a crop wire, we'd be there to take that crop in. We'd know what come of our planting. And rabbits. And I'd take care of them. Tell them how, how I'd do that, George. Sure. You'd go on the alfalfa patch and you'd have a sack. And you'd fill up the sack, bring it in, and put it in the rabbit cages. <laughs> they'd nibble and they'd nibble the way they do. I've seen them. <laughs> Every six weeks or so, the does would troll litter. So we'd have plenty of rabbits to eat or sell. And we'd have a few pigeons. They'd go flying around around the windmill, just like they'd done when I was a kid. <laughs> and it'd be our own. We don't like a guy, we can say get the hell out. My God, he's got to go. And if a friend come along, why we'd have an extra buck? You know what we'd say? We'd say, why don't you spend the night? <laughs> and by God, he would. We'd have a center dog and a couple of striped cats. But you got to watch out that the cats don't get the little rabbits. You just let them try. I'll break your goddamn necks. I'll smash them flat with a stick. I'd smash them flat with a stick. That's what I'd do. <laughs> you know where there's a place like that? Suppose I do what's up to you. Oh, but you don't need to tell me where it's at. It might be any place. Sure, that's right. You couldn't find it in a hundred years. <laughs> How could you say my place like that? Well, I could get it for 600 bucks. The old people in Olden flat the bus. And the old lady needs men. Say, what's it to you? You got nothing to do with us. Well, I ain't much good with only one hand. I uh, lost my hand right here in the ranch. That's why they didn't hand me. They give me a job swamp. They give me two hundred and fifty dollars because I lost my hand. And I got fifty more saved up in the bank right now. So that's three hundred. And I got forty more coming at the end of the month. Now I'll tell you what. Suppose I get in with you guys. That's three hundred and forty bucks I put in. You know I ain't much good, but I could cook and and tend the chickens and and do some gardening. I'll have the buck. I got.
sell eggs. Stuff like that. Jesus Christ, I bet we could swing her. I bet we could swing her. No, I, I got her four years ago. They'll pin me pretty soon. Just as soon as I can't swap out no bunkhouses, they'll put me out on the county. You know, maybe if I give you guys my money, you'll, you'll let me hoe in the garden and chicken you stuff like that. But hell, I'd be on our own place. I'd be back to work on our own place. See what they've done with the dog. They said he wasn't no good to himself near nobody else, but when I ain't that way, nobody will shoot me. I wish somebody would. They wouldn't do nothing like that. I won't have no place to go to. You know, I, I can't get no jobs, no more. We'll do her. Our damn, we'll fix up that little old place and we'll go live there. Suppose it was a carnival or a circus coming to town or a ball game or anything. Just go to her. We wouldn't ask nobody if we could. Just say, we'll, we'll go to her by God, and we would. Just milk the cows and some grain and the chickens and go to her. And put some grass to the rabbits. I wouldn't forget to feed them. <laughs> we gonna do it, George? In one month. Right smack in one month. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write to them old people that owns a place that, that we'll take her. And Candy, Candy will send $100 to buy her. No, I sure will. <laughs>
God to beat the hell out of you, I guess I'm elected. <laughs> the hell are you laughing at? Huh? Come on, you big bastard. Get on your feet. You big son of a bitch is gonna laugh at me. I'll show you who's yelling. Get off, Curly. You ain't gonna fire. Come on in. 
didn't set him up. Well, she don't care. She lets me. As long as you won't leave me alone, you might as well sit down. All the boys go into town, huh? Bubba Lil Candy, he just sits in the bunkhouse, sharpening and figuring. Figuring? Sharpening and figuring. What's Candy figuring about? About the land, about the little place. <laughs> you are nuts. You're crazier than a witch. What land are you talking about? The land we're going to get, and the little house and the pigeons. Just nuts. I don't blame the guy that you're traveling with for keeping you out of sight. It ain't no lie. We're going to do it. Gonna get a little place and live off the fat of the land. <laughs> you think it's a lie, but it ain't no lie. Every word's the truth. You ask George. You traveling around with George, don't you? Sure. Me and him goes every place together. Sometimes he talks, and you don't know what the hell he's talking about. Ain't that so? Ain't that so? Yeah, sometimes. Just talks. And you don't know what the hell it's all about. How long do you think it'll be before the pups will be old enough to pet? <laughs> a guy can talk to you and be sure you won't go glad. A couple of weeks and then pups will be all right. George knows what it's about. Just talking and you don't understand nothing. Well, this is just a nigga talking, busted back nigga. It don't mean, don't mean nothing, you see. You couldn't remember, couldn't remember it anyway. I see it over and over. A guy talking to another guy, it don't make no difference if he don't know or hear what he understands. They, they just talking. George can tell you screwy things. It don't matter. It's just talking. It's just being with another guy, that's all. Suppose George don't come back anymore. Suppose George took a powder and just don't come back. What you do then? What? What? I said, suppose George don't come back from town tonight. And you never hear from him no more. Just suppose that. Hey, you won't do that. George wouldn't do nothing like that. I've been with George a long time. He'll come back tonight. Don't you think he will? Nobody can tell. What a guy can tell. Let's say he don't come back. He can't. Suppose he gets killed or hurt and he can't come back. I don't know. Say, what you doing anyways? It ain't true. George ain't hurt. Want me to tell you what'll happen? They'll take you to the booby hatch. They'll tie you up with a collar around you. Like a dog. Then you'll be just like me, living in a camp. Who hurt George? Ain't nobody hurt George. He's all right. What you supposing for? Ain't nobody supposed to be. You'll be, supposed you'll to be back all right. Nobody's supposed to suppose to hurt George. Now sit down. George ain't hurt. Nobody gonna talk. Go on, sit down. Hurt to George. Maybe you can see. You got George. He's coming back. Suppose you didn't have nobody. Suppose you couldn't go to the bunkhouse to play rum because you was black. How'd you like that? Suppose you had to sit out here and read books. Sure, could play horseshoes until it got dark. Then you have to read books. Books ain't no good. A guy needs somebody to be near you. A guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. Don't make no difference who he is as long as he's with you. I tell you, a guy gets too lonely, he gets sick. George will be back. Maybe George will come back already. Maybe I, maybe I go see. I didn't mean to scare you. He'll be back. I was talking about myself. George won't go away and leave me alone. I know George will do that. I remember when I was a little boy. My old man had a chicken farm. I had two brothers. Always there. Always there. We used to sleep right in the same room. Right in the same bed, all three. We had a strawberry patch. Had an alfalfa patch. We used to turn the chickens out in the alfalfa patch on a sunny morning. Me and my brothers would sit on the fence and watch it. White chickens it was. George says we're going to have alfalfa. You're nuts. We well, are too going to get it. You ask George. You're nuts. I've seen hundreds of men come up, come on the road up down the ranches, bindles on their back, the same damn thing in their heads. Hundreds of them. They come and they go and they, and they quit and they go on. 
And every damn one of them has got a little piece of land in his head. head. And never a damn one of them ever gets it. Just like heaven. Everybody wants a little piece of land, we but nobody two. ever gets it. We got two. And nobody. It's just in your head. Guys all the time talking about it. Just in your head. Guess somebody's out there. That you, Slim? Oh, the Slim went to town. Is that, that you see that name? You mean the big guy? Yeah, yeah. You see him around any place? He's in here. Oh, uh, look, 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 I've been figuring something out about the place. You can come in if you want to. Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, of course, if, uh, if you want me to. Uh, oh, come on in. Everybody's coming in here. You might as well. It's getting to be like a goddamn racetrack. Now you got a, a nice, cozy little place in here. Must be nice to have a, a room all to yourself this way. Sure. And my new pile under the window, all to myself. Said about the place? You know, I've been here a long time. And, and Crick's been here a long time. But this is the first time I ever been in this room. Guys don't come in the colored man's room. Nobody been here but Slim. The place? You said about the place? Oh yeah, I, I got it all figured out. We can make some real money on them rabbits if we go about it right. But I get to tell him. George says I get to tell him. He promised. You guys must be kidding yourselves. You all, all talking a hell of a lot, but you won't get no land. You'll be a swamper until they take you out of here in the box. Hell, I've seen it happen to many guys. Boom, well, we're going to do it. Now George says we are, and we got the money right now. Yeah, and where's George now? In, t in town at the cat house. That's where your money's going. I tell you, I've seen it happen too many times. Oh no, George ain't got the money in town. The money's in the bank. Oh, me and Lenny and George. We're going to have a roof to ourselves. And we're going to have a dog and, and chickens. And we're going to have green corn and maybe a cow. <laughs> you say you got the money? Well, we got, we got most of it. Just a little bit more to get. Have it all in one month. George has got the land all picked out, too. Never seen a guy really do it. I've seen guys nearly crazy with loneliness of land. But every time the cat house or a blackjack came, get away from them. If you guys wanted a hand for working for nothing, just as keep, why well, I come and lend a hand. I ain't so crippled I can't work like a son of a bitch if I wanted to. Couldn't go to bed like I told you, could you, Lenny? Hell no. You gotta get out in society and flap your mouth. Holding a convention out here. You was gone. There was nobody in the bunkhouse. I ain't gonna do bad things, George. The only time I get any peace is when you're asleep. If you get to walking in your sleep, I'll chop off your head like a chicken. We was just talking in here. Ain't no harm in that. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Gotta be here every minute, I guess. Gotta watch you. Well, it ain't nothing against you, Crooks. We was, uh, we just wasn't gonna tell nobody. <laughs> Didn't you have no fun in time? Oh, well, I sat in a chair and Susie was cracking jokes and the guys was starting to raise a little puny hell. Christ almighty, I've never been this way before. I'm just gonna set out a dime and a nickel for a shot. And then I think, what a hell of a lot of bulk carrot seed you can get for 15 cents. Oh, nothing them damn little envelopes. But, but bulk seed, you, you sure can. And pretty soon I, I come back. I can't think of nothing else. Them guys slinging around all that money made me jumpy. Well, the guy got to have some fun. You know, I, I went to a parlor house in Bakersfield once. God almighty little place. I w went upstairs on a red carpet. And there was big pictures on the wall. And we sat in, in, in big, soft chairs. And then there were cigarettes on the table. And they was free. And pretty soon, a jack come in with drinks on the tray. And then drinks was free. Take all you want. And pretty soon, the girls come in. And they was just as polite and nice. Quiet and pretty. Didn't see Michael. <laughs> you know, I mean, made, made you kind of scared to ask him. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah? And what did them soft chairs?
and it cost you twelve and a half bucks extra. You shot a week's pay to walk on that red carpet. <laughs> a week's pay? Sure. But I worked weeks all my life, and I can't remember none of them. Clutch. Well, that was nearly twenty years ago, and I can remember that. The girl I went with was named Arlene. Had on a, a, a pretty pink silk dress. I suppose you're looking for Curly. Well, Curly ain't here. I don't know Curly ain't here. I wanted to ask Crook song. I didn't know you guys was here. But didn't George tell you before? We don't want nothing to do with you. You know damn well Curly ain't here. I know where Curly went. Got his arm in the sling and he went anyhow. I tell you, I come out here to ask Crook something. Maybe you better go, on, go along on back to your own house. You ain't wanted in a colored man's room. I don't want no trouble. You don't have nothing to ask me. You got a husband. You got no call to come fooling around with other guys causing trouble. I try to be nice and polite to you lousy bindle bums, but you're too good. I tell you, I could have went with shows. And a guy wanted to put me in pictures right in Hollywood. I'm out here to ask somebody. All right, I had enough. You ain't wanted here. We told you you ain't calling us bindle sticks. You got floozy ideas with us guys amongst it. You ain't got sense enough to see us guys ain't bindle sticks. Suppose you could get us cane tonight. Suppose you could. You think we hit the highway and look for another two bit job? You don't know. We got our own ranch to go to, and our own house, and our own fruit. And we got friends. That's what we got. Maybe, maybe there was a time when we didn't have nothing. But that ain't no more. You damn old goat. If you had two bits, you'd be in sold there getting a drunk and stuck in the bottom of the glass. Maybe she could ask Brooks what she'd come to ask and then get the hell home. I don't think she'd come to ask nothing. What happened to Curly's hand? <laughs> so it wasn't no machine. He didn't act like he was telling the truth. Who done it? I wasn't there. I, I didn't see it. Come on, Crooks. What happened? I won't let on to Curly. He says he got his hand caught in a gear. Who done it? Didn't nobody do it.
got to get killed. You weren't so little as mice, and I didn't bounce you hard. Maybe Georgie can let me to the rabbits if he finds out I got killed. This ain't no bad thing, I gotta hide the brush. I'll, I'll tell George I found it dead. But he'll know. George always knows. He'll say, he'll say, you, you done it, you tried to put nothing over him on me. He'll say, now just for that, you don't get the ten, you know what? God damn you, why do you got to get killed? You ain't so little as mice. Now he won't let me. Now he won't let me. He wasn't big enough and they told me he wasn't. I didn't know you'd get killed so easy. Maybe George won't care. See, your goddamn little son of a bitch wasn't nothing to George. Lenny, where are you at? Oh, uh, I thought I'd find you here. Hey, say, you know, I've been talking to Slim. It's okay. We ain't gonna get the can. Slim's been talking to the boss, and Slim told the boss you guys is good fuckers, and the boss has got to move that frame. Remember what hell the boss gave us last night? Well, he told Slim he got his eye on you with yours, but you ain't gonna get the can. And <laughs> can say, the boss gave Curly's wife hell too. Told her never to go near the men no more. Give her worse hell than you and George. A ain't you glad? Sure. You ain't sick.
say no nice clothes. <laughs> I'm gonna go with pictures and I have nice clothes. Oh, all them nice clothes like they wear. I'm all setting in big hotels and they'll take pictures of me. And when they have them reading, I'm gonna go and talk in the radio, but it won't cost me nothing because I'm in the pictures. <laughs> George gonna be mad. Oh, 
George can be real mad. Maybe he won't be able to tend the rabbits. I'll just throw him away. Oh, it's bad enough like it is.
might have went. I don't know. I guess we gotta go. Only cover around here is down by the river. He might have went there. We'll get him. Maybe bring him in, lock him up. He's nuts, Slim. He never done this to be mean. You can only keep Curly in, but Curly wants to shoot. Suppose they lock him up, George. Strap him down and put him in a cage. That ain't no good. I know. I know. I think there's only one way to get him out of this. I know. The best is still not in its place. All right, you guys, the niggers got a shotgun. You take it, cuz. He might have just hit up in the woods. We'll give him no chance. Shoot for his guts. Well, I ain't got a gun. Go in and tell my old man. Get a gun from him. Let's go now. You're going with us, fella. Yeah, I'll come. But listen, Curly, the poor bastard's not stone shoot him. You don't know what he was doing. Carson was Luger, ain't he? Maybe Carson lost his gun. I seen it this morning, it's been took. Curly, maybe you better stay here with your wife. Nah. I'm gonna shoot the guts out of that poor bastard. I'm gonna get him myself. Come on, you guys! Candy, you stay here then. The rest of us play the game, though. Okay, move out. Uh, 
me and George will go up the country road. Uh, you guys get on the highway and drag back. We get separated, we'll meet here. Remember this place. All I care is getting a bastard. Where is it? Want me to go away? See it! 